If you like king penguins, South Georgia Island in the Antarctic is the place to go. It has about half of the 2.2 million king penguins in the world. If you're willing to spend a bunch of days being tossed around on a ship while traveling through southern oceans to reach South Georgia, you can see hundreds of thousands of them. Many king penguins look natty and handsome, standing three feet tall and appearing to wear tuxedos. Others do not look nearly as natty. In fact, many of these other king penguins look bizarrely comical. Some have hairy bellies. Some appear to be wearing yellow earmuffs, which is a good idea in the cold South Georgia climate. Some look as if they are wearing a hairy suit over long underwear. And some look like rodents. But why do they look like this? The answer is connected to a process called molting. All birds molt, which involves shedding old feathers and growing new ones. King penguins do not achieve their full adult feathering until their third year. First-year birds do not look anything like adults. In fact, early explorers thought the first-year birds were a different species called the woolly penguin. The woolly penguins were sometimes called oakum boys. Their hair-like feathers were the color of a brown substance called oakum used to caulk the timbers on ships. Most bird species, especially those who fly, replace a few feathers at once so that they can still fly while molting. But because of the extreme conditions in which they live, king penguins must adopt a different approach. They perform what is called a catastrophic molt. They grow all of their new feathers at once, staying out of the water while doing it. The new feathers push out the old ones, and it usually takes two to four weeks. The king penguins who molt from their woolly first-year plumage into their black and white second-year plumage often produce strange and hilarious-looking intermediate feather patterns. King penguins reach full adult plumage in their third year. Second-year plumage looks like adult plumage but is a little lighter. Instead of having an orange patch on their ears like the king penguin on the right, the second-year birds have a patch that is lemon yellow like the penguin on the left. In their third year, they achieve full adult plumage. You can see some of the molted feathers on the ground around them. King penguins are fastidious about keeping their feathers clean, waterproofed, and properly arranged because they live in a cold climate and swim in icy waters. They spend a lot of time preening their feathers to maintain waterproofing and insulation and to replenish the air layer trapped within them. The preen gland, which produces waterproof oil to be applied to the feathers, is at the base of the tail and penguins can preen even while at sea. To get at all of their feathers while preening, they sometimes have to significantly contort their bodies. Some penguins engage in mutual preening, which is part of courtship behavior. This helps to strengthen their pair bond. Male and female king penguins have similar plumage, but the males are slightly larger and heavier like the one on the right. The king penguin breeding cycle is 14 to 16 months, so they can breed only twice every three years. You can see most phases of the reproductive cycle when visiting a colony. King penguins can breed when three to four years old, but more likely when five to eight. They stay with their mates during the breeding season, but pair fidelity is low after that. The woolly chicks do not have waterproof feathers, so they cannot go into the water to find food. Their parents go off to find food and return to feed them every five to seven days. While the adults are away, the chicks are kept in creches, which are groups of woolly youngsters protected by one or more adults. The king penguin diet consists of small fish, squid, and small crustaceans called krill. The adults can keep food in their stomach for a long time without it being digested or spoiling, and scientists are looking at the antimicrobial properties in a penguin's stomach for possible links to substances that can help humans. When the adults are molting, their feathers are not waterproof, so they can't go into the water to find food. That means they not only can't feed themselves, but they also can't feed their chicks. Before this happens, the chicks typically build up a lot of fat and sometimes become larger than the adults. The young penguins often have to wait three months between times when they are fed. During this time, they can lose up to half of their body weight, so they often are very insistent upon being fed when their parents return. King penguins are one of the only two penguin species who do not build a nest. They lay one egg and keep it balanced on their feet under a fold on their bellies. The penguins with belly flaps usually have an egg or chick below. Birds who make nests do not live in them. They only lay their eggs in them. 
Human homes provide shelter from the elements and help people to maintain their body temperature. For birds, feathers serve the same purpose as a house, so a bird's home is actually its feathers. Penguins have evolved a form of camouflage called countershading. This is a useful strategy and many seabird families other than penguins also have evolved this type of black and white coloration. Penguins are black on the back and white underneath. If a predator looks down from above, the surface of the ocean looks dark and a black back will be difficult to see. If a predator in the sea looks up from underwater, the surface of the ocean looks light because of the reflection of the sky and a white belly will be difficult to see. The white belly also will be more difficult for a penguin's prey to see. The color configuration also helps the birds to regulate their body temperature. Birds who spend most of their life in frigid water need black feathers on their back to absorb as much heat as possible. But in the summer during the nesting season, they can turn their white breast toward the sun to reflect heat. Black feathers contain the pigment melanin that makes them more durable. Feathers of birds living in the middle of the sea exposed to the elements will suffer greater wear and tear than the feathers of birds in a more sheltered environment. Penguins can swim on the surface of the water like ducks and geese. King penguins sometimes dive to depths of more than 1,500 feet and they can stay underwater for more than five minutes. When near the shoreline, some king penguins appear to be body surfing. And when they are in rocky, fast-moving water, some appear to be doing the equivalent of whitewater rafting. Like all seabirds, penguins can drink seawater. They have special glands behind their eyes that can filter out excess salt, which drips into their nostrils. When they shake their heads, the salt flies out. Some king penguins sleep while standing up. Others sleep lying in a prone position. They sometimes extend their flippers when lying prone, as if they are dreaming about flying. Many penguins flap their flippers when standing erect. They do this to exercise the muscles they need for swimming. Penguin flippers share the skeletal structure of the wings of other birds, except their bones are flattened and rigidly joined, shaping them into smooth, soft paddles best suited for rapid propulsion in a dense medium such as water. Unlike most other diving birds, penguins propel themselves with their flippers and steer with their feet. Rotating shoulder sockets allow enough twist to generate thrust with both up and down strokes, a trait shared only with hummingbirds. While it might seem as if all the members of the colony live peacefully together, this is not always the case. Sometimes king penguins slap at each other with their flippers. These activities look more like posturing than actual fighting. However, sometimes king penguins get injured, either from a fight, sliding across a rock, or being bitten. You sometimes see blood on their feathers. Some king penguins have puncture wounds. King penguins share their colonies with other species of birds and mammals. Among the mammals are elephant seals. They are enormous and can weigh more than three or four tons, while king penguins typically weigh only 30 to 40 pounds. Elephant seals rarely eat penguins, and the two species seem to coexist well. When young elephant seals are weaned, they are called weaners. This is a play on words because they lie on the beach like huge sausages and weigh hundreds of pounds. They also are called blubber slugs because they have a thick layer of blubber and lie on the beach like slugs. Antarctic fur seals are much smaller than elephant seals but can reach more than 10 times the weight of a king penguin. They sometimes eat penguins and in a few rare cases have tried to copulate with them. When penguins are swimming, they must be careful about threats from orcas. In water, leopard seals also will attack king penguins. Some of the biggest threats to penguins come from other species of birds. Skuas are seabirds who look like barrel-chested gulls. They hang around penguin colonies looking for unattended eggs, weak chicks, or dead penguins. Both northern and southern giant petrels do the same. Here is a southern giant petrel stomping through a penguin colony. Penguins are ancient birds who first appeared in the fossil record from 60 million years ago. About 50 species of penguins are extinct. The oldest fossils of modern penguins are only 11 to 13 million years old. 
The largest extinct penguin was from New Zealand and thought to weigh up to 165 pounds. Emperor penguins, the largest of the 18 penguin species still alive, weigh a little over 50. King penguins are the second largest species. Here you can see a king penguin on the right. The bird on the left is a gentoo penguin, the third largest species, and a chinstrap penguin, the fourth largest species, is in the middle. A group of penguins on land is called a waddle of penguins. The waddling walk of penguins is both humorous and endearing. While penguins look short-legged, they actually possess long and mobile leg bones. Their waddling walk is an energy-saving technique based on the pendulum effect. Here is the sole of a foot of a dead king penguin. Note the little nipples that resemble the sole of a running shoe. Penguins are among the relatively small group of birds who have only three toes on each foot rather than four. The feathers on a king penguin's back look like a computer circuit board with a lot of very small knobs packed tightly together. Penguin plumage is the densest of any bird species. They have feathers all over their body except their bill and feet. The silky outer surface helps to reduce friction when swimming. The outer feathers overlap tightly like fish scales, protecting a layer in which air is trapped for insulation. The insulation has evolved to keep penguins warm in both air and water. In warm weather, penguins are in serious danger of overheating. King penguins sometimes lie on their bellies and pant. This exposes the skin on their feet to the air and helps them to dissipate heat. One of the reasons climate change is such an important issue regarding penguins is that they have evolved to retain heat in icy water and extreme cold temperatures. Now that climate is warming, they run the risk of suffering from severe heat stress. We can only hope that world leaders will address climate change issues so that these beautiful and ugly penguins will survive.